Satnavs are fighting again. We're in Nina now. But I'm trusting Susie. But she's bringing me ways that I see all these old abbeys and friaries and things. It's a Fortune Ashkadi and Claw Kazawaki. Hello everybody in YouTube land and welcome back to the Kazawaki Show. Back on the photo rally trail again today. Forgive me gods of motorcycling, it has been three days since my last photo rally adventure. And today we're going to visit Silver Mines, which gets its name from the mining industry for silver in the area. Now Silver Mines has a very, very long established uh, history and heritage in terms of mining. Uh, the earliest recorded mining activity, incredibly enough, dates from 1289. And it was started by some Italian miners of all things. Chaps who had come from uh, Genoa and Florence in search of silver. It didn't last for too long, by all accounts. There's a, a lot of mining, intensive mining in, in silver mines in the 19th century, but it came to an end in about 1874, I think, and the mines were closed down. But this is kind of a, a theme in silver mines. Mines were opened and worked, and then closed for a period due to market fluctuations and the price of silver and zinc and copper and things and then they'd be reopened when the, the markets would be more, more suited. But it wasn't until 1917 when the mines started opening again in the 20th century, uh, largely due to the, uh, the Great War of 1914 to 1918. The, uh, it was actually the British government, the, the Ministry for Natural Resources, who opened the mines and silver mines again was an attempt to get raw materials to, to fund the uh, the war effort. Now I'm trying to remember my facts because I'm determined to do a better job today than I did the last day. The last day I had I had done my research all in one morning for about four different photo rally points and I just when I got out on the bike I mixed up centuries, I mixed up dates, I mixed up locations, I mixed up pronunciations. It's kind of a disaster of a vlog really but sure. What harm? Silver mines, zinc and copper. No, the Silver Mines Lead and Zinc Company was founded. I think in the 60s? Or maybe the 50s. I think it was the 50s actually. Uh, no, 1948. Oh god. I'm not sure. I'll flash it up on the screen. The Silver Mines Lead and Zinc Company was, was founded and they opened the mines again in silver mines in two locations in Chile and in Ballygown and what was interesting about this was they were pioneering a new type of uh, mining called the uh, Wales oh Christ what was it the Wales Killen? is it a Wales Killen? and basically that was kind of a, a German designed operation and it was uh, the idea was that it would uh, it was a rotary killing which meant that the the raw materials were filed into this killing and it turned I suppose and it was mixed with um, firing materials like the, the fuel for burning it off but it wasn't a particularly successful endeavor because they ended up, uh, they used a lot of local um, local labour, but they didn't necessarily provide the uh, training to make it efficient. That ran for 1950 to 1952. At the same time in Chile, they had a more traditional style of mining, which included 
open mining and underground mining it had a railway for transporting the materials it had a, a ball crusher for crushing the materials and it had a very 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 cool um, steam engine house which we're going to see today but I'll talk about that when we get there see the, up ahead now you can see the, the mountains where the, the mining was taking place we're about six kilometers from Silver Mines itself uh, from the photo rally point yeah, these hills had deposits of various things copper zinc silver um, barite um, lead was another thing that was mined here through over the years look at that like but I'm actually really excited to see this particular rally point because the uh, the building we're going to see it looks an impressive looking structure anyway in terms of stonework and that but uh, the function that it fulfilled and the function of the machine that was associated with this building is just such a cool feat of engineering it's called a Cornish engine and it was a a large steam engine so in the past steam engines had been essentially working on a piston so you build up a head of steam the steam is forced over the top of the piston the piston goes down and then the steam is is emitted into the the atmosphere the Cornish engines were uh, slightly more efficient insofar as they didn't release the steam out into the the atmosphere what they did was they had steam above and below the piston hello doggies Ah, there it is. Every time I have to turn this thing, this video has to be edited to take out all the grunts and groans. This is a terrible idea. enough I got a pretty nice picture there of the the Cornish engine house which has been recently um, refurbished I think and if you are doing the photo rallies make sure you have somebody with you or you 
walk up and get a flat stone on the ground somewhere before you come up because I was trying to pack little bits of rubble under the side stand to make sure she didn't keel over. But this is a Cornish steam engine house and it was used to house a steam engine which was used in the mining uh, mining activities. And it was a change from previous to, to steam engines being used in the mines. Um, what was used was uh, either horses walking around on a wheel, pulling a wheel, or water wheels were used. But the obvious problem with those is horses get tired and water wheels require a certain force of river or stream nearby depending on the size of the wheel you want to drive. So the move was leaning towards um, steam driven engines which could use the coal that they were mining to fuel them. In Watt's engine the steam built up above the piston forced the piston down then the steam was released into the atmosphere and the weight of the the rod and the, the pumping mechanism pulled the piston back up and the second stroke was ready to start. Um, the Cornish engines were a little bit more advanced. What they did was they used uh, different atmospheric pressures. So it started with the piston up at the top with some steam underneath the piston and some steam above the piston and the piston from the boiler would come into the top of the piston build up the pressure and force the pressure down and at the bottom the steam that was underneath the piston was being forced into a condenser which obviously changed steam into water which affected the atmospheric pressure and created a, a vacuum below the the piston so you had double the effect double the power double the efficiency and at the bottom of the stroke um, the boiler or halfway down the stroke the boiler inlet valve was closed and the steam was just allowed to expand above the piston and the um, the vacuum continued to pull down the the piston and then the condenser valve was closed and an equilibrium valve was opened which released the steam out of the from underneath the piston and brought it back in up to the top of the piston again and once the vacuum had been removed the weight of the pump gear pull the piston back up and uh, the stroke was ready to to restart. It was a serious feat of engineering like. And what they were used for was usually for pumping water out of the mines. And the other thing it was used for was super cool was for um, man engines. And what a man engine was was kind of a a lift type system that allowed the men working in the mines to go up and down into the shafts. What it was done was if you picture that that beam that's attached to the piston which is seesawing up and down and what they did was you stepped onto a, a platform at the bottom of the, the shaft we'll say. We say as, as the piston was being forced down by the pressure of the steam from the boiler the seesaw would go up and the platform would rise and at the top of the stroke you just stepped off onto a platform clear of the the working gear and when the the equilibrium valve was opened and the seesaw went down another platform appeared in front of you and you stepped onto it so it was kind of an incremental rising up out of the the shaft which was pretty cool and they were very popular with the workers of course because their uh, wages were only calculated from when they got to working depth so the quicker they got down to working depth the quicker they started earning money and I'm going to very quickly slip across here. Slip. Not slip. Hopefully not slip. Show you the inside of it. This gate is open, but it doesn't push in. And I'm not going to be pulling it out to try and climb around it like a mountain goat. It's pretty cool. That's where the pistons would have been operating. And out at the top of it then would have been the the seesaw pivot point. Very, very cool. I say that a lot in these motor vlog videos for the photo rallies. Very, very cool.
now let's see how we get on navigating out of this place with this four inch thick base of loose gravel and a downhill and a tight corner and a heavy bike and a small man oh I do not relish this at all Please, please make that turn so I haven't got the strength to pull your bike back up. Okay. Come on. Get around it. Get around it. Oh. Oh. Measured. Oh. Lads, I'm a fucking hero.